everyone, welcome to another session of Pass Now Now's Wife Preparatory Class. I'll be continuing with some questions in chemistry and for today we shall begin with the year 2012, question 3A. The question reads, I define nuclear fission. How do we define nuclear fission? We have fission and we have fusion. Now, fusion has to do with combining, to combine or unite. But fission has to do with splitting or break. So when asked to define nuclear fission, we define it thus. Nuclear fission is a process that involves the splitting of a heavy nucleus of a radioactive isotope into two light nuclei of slightly equal mass with the release of energy and radiation. The next part is question 3AII, which reads, a certain natural decay series starts with uranium-238 and ends with thorium-230. Each step involves the loss of an alpha or a beta particle. Using the given information, deduce how many alpha and beta particles are emitted. Now, for alpha decay, we have this. This is for alpha decay, and for beta decay, we have this. Now, we are asked to determine or deduce the number of alpha and beta particles that were emitted. Let's start with an alpha decay to find out the mass number and the atomic number after the first alpha decay. Now, Don't forget that A stands for mass number or atomic mass and Z stands for atomic number. Here we have 238 minus 4 which will give us 234 and for our atomic number Z we have 92 minus 2. This will give us 90. This for the first alpha decay. Now, don't forget that our final element, or the final, the final element he has gotten, is thorium-230. Now, we have our mass number to be 234. It's not the same here. It's not yet correct. But for our atomic number, is correct. But we still have to move further and get a beta particle that is being emitted. So for beta particle, we have this, which is this, which we got here, 90x to give us 234 it will still remain the same because here we have zero so two three four minus zero our mass number still remains two three four for atomic number we have z plus one that's 90 plus one to give us 91 here our mass number and our atomic number they don't rhyme with what we have as our final 
element. So we'll take another alpha decay emission to find out if we we'll get, so that we'll know the exact number of alpha particles that has been emitted. So for the second alpha particle, we have to give us for the atomic mass, we have 234 minus 4 to give us 230. And for our atomic number, we have 91 minus 2. This will give us 89. Here, our mass number rhymes with that of thorium, but our atomic number does not. So we'll go through another process of beta decay. This will give us our S will remain, that's our atomic mass or mass number will remain 230 and our atomic number Z which is Z plus 1 it's 9 plus 1 to give us 90 so we can see that our mass number is the same and our atomic number is the same so from this we can deduce that two alpha particles and two beta particles were emitted So our final answer, therefore, we have the final equation will be thus. This is minus one e. Therefore, alpha particles emitted and the beta particles emitted So our final answer, this is our final equation after all that alpha and beta decay carried out. Therefore, number of alpha, alpha particles emitted is equal to two, and the number of beta particles emitted is equal to two. I hope you understand. Now we shall move to our next question. Our next question is taken from Year 2019, question 4B. And the question reads, consider the following equation as seen on your screen. Calculate the volume of unused oxygen gas when 40 centimeter cube of hydrogen gas is packed with 30 centimeter cube of oxygen gas. Now, this is from a topic which we know as gas laws. We are asked to deduce or to calculate the volume of unused oxygen gas. Now, a more ratio from this equation is this. <coughs> we have two moles of hydrogen gas reacting with one mole of oxygen gas to give two moles, sorry. To give two moles of what? To give two water molecules. And our volume ratio, according to Avogadro's law, will give us two is to one is to two. 
Now, from the question, 40 centimeter cube of hydrogen gas was given, and 30 centimeter cube of oxygen gas was also given. Now, we have to find the reacting volume. To find the volume of one mole of hydrogen gas or oxygen gas that reacted, 40 divided by 2 will give us 20. Hence, 20 centimeter cube of hydrogen gas reacted since it was only one mole of oxygen gas that reacted here. And here, two water molecules we are or two water molecules was formed here. So that means our volume formed here is 40 centimeter cube. Now the question asks to asked us to find the volume of unused oxygen gas. How do we do that? The total volume given, which is 30 centimeter cube, minus the reacting volume, which is 20 centimeter cube. And this will give us 10 centimeter cube. Hence, we can say that the volume of unused oxygen gas is 10 centimeter cube. Therefore, our answer is volume of unused oxygen gas is 10 centimeter cube. So now we'll go to our next question. Our next question is taken from the same year 2019 question 4C. The question reads, calcium carbonate of mass 1.0 gram was heated until there was no further change. I, write an equation for the reaction which took place. I, I, calculate the mass of the residue. Roman figure three, calculate the volume of the gas evolved at STP. Roman figure four, what would be the volume of the gas measured as 15 degrees Celsius and 760 millimeter mercury. We are given the relative atomic mass of carbon to be 12, oxygen 16, calcium 40, and the molar volume of a gas at STP equals 22.4 dm cube. Now the I part of the question asks us to write the equation of the reaction. Calco 3, which is our calcium carbonate, was heated. It will be heated to give calcium oxide and CO2, which is carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide. So this is our question I. This is the answer. The next question, which is Roman figure 2, said to calculate the mass of the residue. Now, to determine the residue here, this is a solid that was heated to give calcium oxide. Calcium oxide is a solid, but CO2 is a gas. It cannot be the residue because normally a gas will evolve or be liberated. So this is our residue. This is what we'll find. So to find our mass, first, we'll calculate the molar mass of um, calcium carbonate. And to find the uh, molar mass of any compound, we have to calculate or sum up the relative atomic masses of every single element present. The um, relative atomic mass of calcium is 40 plus um, carbon, which is 12, plus oxygen, which is 16, and we'll times that by 3 to get. This will give us 52 plus 48, So the molar mass of calco 3, which is calcium carbonate, is 100. Then we'll find the molar mass of this as well. Which is 40 plus 
16. This will give us 56. Now, from this question, or from the equation of the reaction, one mole of this was broken down, was heated to give one mole of calcium oxide and one mole of um, carbon four oxide. Now, if 100 grams, 100 grams of calcium carbonate will yield 56 grams of calcium oxide. If 100 grams of calcium carbonate, we use 56 grams of calcium oxide. One gram of one gram of calcium carbonate, we yield 56 divided by 100. 56 divided by 100 will give us 0.56 grams. Therefore, the mass of the residue Therefore, the mass of the residue, which is calcium oxide, is 0.56 grams. Roman numeral 3 asks us to find the volume of the gas involved at STP. This is the gas, CO2. And we know that the, or it was even given in the question, that the molar volume of a gas at STP is 22.4 dm cubed. Now, if one mole of CACO3 yields one mole of CO2, at STP, 100 grams of um, calcium carbonate will give us 22.4 dm cube of CO2. So now, if 100 grams of calcium carbonate gives us 22.4 dm cube of um, carbon 4 oxide, 1 gram of calcium carbonate will give us 22.4 divided by 100 times 1 of CO2. Now this will give us, from our mathematics here on 2, we have 0.224 dm cube of CO2. So our final answer is therefore, the volume of the gas evolved at SCP is 0.224 dm cube of CO2, which is the gas, 0.224 dm cube. You can round this up, it will also give you 0.22 dm cubed. Okay, so we'll go to Roman figure 4. In case you've forgotten the question, it reads, what volume, what would be the volume of the gas measured at 15 degrees Celsius and 760 millimeter mercury? Already, from here, we are giving temperature, we are giving our pressure, but in the Roman figure 3, we calculated the volume of the gas evolved at STP. So our parameter for the initial temperature will be the value of temperature at STP, which is 273 Kelvin. So our T1 is 273 Kelvin. Our T2 will be that given in the question, which is 15, which is our final temperature, which is 15 degrees Celsius. We can't use this like this. We have to use the standard SI units. So we'll convert this to Kelvin. And that will give us 15 plus 273 will give us 288 Kelvin. 
Now, our initial volume was gotten from our, the question that is Roman figure 3, which we calculated to be 0 0.224 dm cube. The question has asked us to find our final volume, which is our V2. Now, from this, we can easily tell what formula we'll use. Since we have T1, we have T2, we have V1, we have V2. We can tell that we are asked to use Charles' law, the formula for Charles' law, which is V1 from Charles' law. Okay, so the next step is to impute our values. Our V1 is 0 0.224. Our initial temperature is 273. Our volume is unknown, which is our final volume is unknown. And then our final temperature is 288. We have to make V2, which is our final volume, the subject of the formula, to easy, easily calculate this. Now let's calculate this. We have 0 0.224 times 288. This will give us 64.52. Sorry, 54, 60, this will give us 64.512 divided by 273. Our final answer is 0 0.236 dm cube. Therefore, our volume, which is our final volume, is 0 0.236 dm cube. I hope you understand. Let's move to our next question. So our next question is taken from the year 2013. Question 8E. And the question reads, an organic compound with relative molecular mass, 136, contains 70.57% carbon, 5.90% hydrogen, and 23.53% oxygen. So this is a... Um, organic compound, the relative molecular mass is 136. Note that whenever you're solving for theory questions, you should put down your parameters so you know what you're working with and what formula you are likely to use so that it will make your work easier. Now, percentage composition of each element present in this organic compound, we have carbon as um, 70.57, hydrogen 5.90, and oxygen is um, an oxygen is 23.53. The question reads: An organic compound with relative molecular mass 136 contains 70.57% carbon, 5.90% hydrogen, and 23.53% oxygen. Determine its I, empirical formula, and Roman figure 2, molecular formula. We are given the relative atomic mass of hydrogen as 1, that of carbon as 12, and oxygen to be 16. Now, when solving questions in the theoretical aspect of um, YEC, we have to take note of the parameters because they will easily tell us what we are working with and what formulas to use. In the question, we are given the relative um, molecular mass of the organic compound to be 136, and the percentage composition of each element present in this organic um, compounds, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. For the percentage composition of carbon, we have it as 
hydrogen as 5.90 and oxygen as 23.53. To solve this first, we have to divide each, each element, the per, um, percentage composition of each element by its relative atomic mass. So the, um, the percentage composition of carbon now will be divided by its relative atomic mass, which is 12. And that of um, hydrogen is 1, six, um, oxygen is um, 16. Now, 70.57 70 divided by 12, this will give us 5.88. Anything divided by 1 is that number, so this will be 5.90. And this 23.53 divided by 16 to give us 1.47. Now, our um, volumes have to be in simple whole ratios, simple whole numbers. Now, our next step will be to divide each of our arrived uh, values by the smallest unit, which is here, 1.47. This divided by this will give us 1. 5.90 divided by 1.47 will give us um, 4, 4.01, which is approximately 4 because the values have to be in simple whole numbers. Then 5.88 5.88 divided by 1.47 will give us 4. Now, the empirical formula of this organic um, compound is we have C H zero four four one. This is the one here is insignificant. So our empirical formula will be C four H four zero. That is for Roman figure I, Roman figure one. For our Roman figure two, which is to find the molecular mass of sorry the molecular formula of the organic compound. To find the, um, the molecular formula of this organic compound, we can use this formula. You can get the molecular formula of the compound by using this formula, empirical formula in brackets, N equals molecular formula. Or we can use this, um, the relative atomic mass of each element, which is relative atomic mass of carbon plus hydrogen plus oxygen to give us the RMM, which is the relative molecular mass and the relative molecular mass as given in the question is 136. Now we have to calculate the um, relative molecular mass of this given this our deduced empirical formula. So we have C which is um, the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12 times 4 plus hydrogen which is 1 times 4 plus oxygen, which is 16, bracket N equals to 136. Now, 12 times, 12, 12 times 4 will give us 48, plus 4, plus 16. This plus this 20, plus this will give us 68. Now we have to find the value for n, which will be 136 divided by 68. Now 136 divided by 68 
will give us 2. So our n is 2. Now, to find the molecular formula, our empirical formula, which is C4H4O, which is oxygen N, will give us N, we discovered to be 2. So this will be Now we we'll use this 2 to multiply each value inside the bracket. Now that of carbon, 4 times 2 will give us 8. And for hydrogen, 4 times 2 will give us 8. Now oxygen has 1 automatically here. So that's 1 times 2, which will give us 2. Therefore, our molecular formula for the organic compound given in the question is C8. HHO2. So this is our empirical formula, which is the answer for I, and this is our molecular formula, which is the answer for I, I. I hope you understood every step taken here. This leads us to our next question, which is a question on electrolysis, year 2014. Question number at number 1J. The question reads, calculate the amount of silver deposited in moles when 10,920 columns of electricity is passed through a solution of a silver salt. Faraday constant is given as 96,500 column per mole. Now, we have to write the ionic equation for silver, which is given as Now, this is our ionic equation. If one mole of Faraday deposits one mole of silver. If one mole of um, Faraday deposits one mole of silver, 96,500 columns of electricity will deposit one mole of silver, then 10,920 columns of electricity will deposit how? How many? We have 10,920 times 1 over 96,500. So this divided by this. We have 10,000 920 divided by 96,500, which gives us a value of um, 0.113. This will give us a value of 0.113 moles of silver. Therefore, 10,920 columns of electricity will deposit 0.113 moles of silver. So this is our final answer. I hope you understand. So that'll be all we shall be taking for today. Please endeavor to go back and solve similar questions so you can get familiar with the questions. Thank you.